hello everyone and thank you for joining us today uh, in today's webinar we will be discussing our product EMS and we will simulate and demonstrate on how to optimize the air gap for an arcing horn in high voltage lines uh, before discussing today's agenda let me introduce ourselves my name is Hassan and I'm a self engineer in EMWorks and we will have today our R&D manager, Dr. Ahmed, who will be delivering the technical part of today's webinar. Uh, our agenda for today is the following. I'll briefly talk about our solution advantages and benefits in general and what products we offer. Then our R&D manager will present the technical part and at the end of the technical presentation, I will talk about the licensing services and various learning resources offered by EMWorks. Uh, the idea of this integration so is truly innovative why we are integrated into a CAD tool uh, what happens conventionally is that if you want to use a new simulation software you have to put uh, a tremendous effort amount of and amount of time uh, to learn a new modeling environment first and only after you can start uh, your simulation Furthermore, usually modeling feature inside a simulation, a simulation software is very primitive. It was not meant for complex geometries. So why don't you get privilege of using uh, arguably the best CAD tools in the world, either is a SolidWorks or um, a Autodesk Inventor. Uh, even if that's not the case and you already used your own CAD tool to model, so now it's time to import your model into the simulation tool. And uh, but, however, what if you want to change different parameters and geometry and see the result on the spot? Yes, that's the time that you should import and export a lot of times. You have to switch between uh, two software or two PCs or two departments multiple times to reach the optimum result. So the best is to do the modeling and simulation all in one place. Uh, we that's why we address this issue and we are just inside your CAD tool, such as SOLIDWORKS or AutoCAD Inventor. For example, for SOLIDWORKS, uh, which is most arguably the best powerful and the most powerful CAD tool, there were other plugins for other applications like mechanical and structural before, but nothing for electromagnetic analysis. We unbelievably filled the gap and we are offering four different products for our respected users inside this CAD tool. Our products are gold certified by Deso System SOLIDWORKS uh, Corporation since 2008. Uh, yeah, we are offering, we are, we offer four products for with various add-on covering a wide range of frequency. Uh, our first product is called EMS, which is used uh, uh, for electric and magnetic uh, field modeling for low frequency applications. It covers many applications like insulators, cables, bus bars, uh, permanent magnets, actuators, circuit breakers, transformers, and motors. Um, the second product is HFworks, which is used for electromagnetic simulation of RF, microwave, high frequency, and high speed electrical and electronic devices. It covers applications including a wide range of antennas, resonators, filters, connectors, waveguides, and etc. Our third product is uh, EMWorks 2D, which offers static analysis and covers the simulation of planar and uh, axisymmetrical axisymmetric geometries. Uh, our latest addition is. Um, Motor Wizard, which is template-based motor design software. It offers analytical and finite element analysis for BLDC and PM motors. In addition to these solvers, we offer few multi-physics solutions like thermal, motion, linear statics, and circuits. Uh, 
In today's webinar, we will utilize EMS software to simulate and demonstrate on how to optimize the air gap for an arcing horn in high voltage lines. I would now request Dr. Ahmed to take over and present the next part of this presentation. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome back to EMOOC's uh, webinar series. My name is Ahmed Kibir and today's uh, topic is how to optimize the air gap of an arcing horn in high voltage lines. As you all know, the idea of an arcing horn is to protect the valuable the expensive insulator in case there is a lightning strike, a sudden load variation, or any other fault condition. Uh, so in brief, the design, let me just hide this air gap. So in a normal operating condition, say 10,000 volt, The insulator protects the high voltage line. But in some situation where the lightning strikes or a sudden load variation in, in the network or the grid, uh, a high voltage can be produced at the high voltage line. In that situation, the whole idea of uh, the arcing, these are basically the horn, is to protect this insulator. So instead of the flash over, it goes through the insulator. If it is 60,000 volt and it is designed to sustain 10,000 volt, definitely this is going to break down. So the idea is you want the, the current to go through the gap. But the gap is made of air. So how is this going to function? So this is a genius idea, is to design the air gap in such a way that at a very high voltage is going to produce uh, the air, the electric field exceeds the breakdown of the air, which is 3 to the power 6 and ionize the air producing corona and the corona is going to producing an arc so the arc is going to so the current is going to go through the arc to the ground and down to earth and your insulator bushing is protected so again the ems is, is it's an add-in to SOLIDWORKS, so we don't need to uh, import or export data. And I'm not going to go through the geometry creation. It's a straightforward in, in SOLIDWORKS. So let's start. What we're going to do, we're going to do what we call a electrostatic study with parameterization. So important to click on the parameterization. Also to compute the fields, the electric field breakdown at different uh, the electric regions. Uh, the meshing just take the adaptive. Okay. Click OK. So the material, you can apply this as an insulator. I, I had a previous study, so this is porcelain. Okay. Uh, the air is, you can apply material through the material library, air. Okay. And or if you have a previous study, which I have, you can simply drag and drop and boom, the whole, all the materials are copied. Now, the loads are boundary conditions. First one is the ground, zero volt. So this is your, this is your ground, along with all of this metallic part and the earth. These are all grounds, so you say, okay. If you want to put the symbols, you can put symbols, you can change the color if you wish, you know, and you can put the symbols. 
All right. Um, the next load restraint is the high voltage. This is my high voltage. And actually, I want to apply 10,000 volt. This particular insulator operates up to 10,000 volt. So again, if I want some symbols, okay, I can put my symbols just to see where bond regulation is applied. That's all I need because the meshing is automatic. I copied the material. I have only two loads boundary conditions. Now, okay, actually there is one step that you have to do is the parameterization, right? So the parameterization, right click on the root of the tree and say parameter. And I defined in the source was a global variable called uh, D1. This is basically the size of the air gap. If you don't know how to create a global variable in SOLIDWORKS, please refer to SOLIDWORKS help, and it's really straightforward. Once you uh, create a, a global variable, you can simply import it. Okay, that's all you need to do. In the parameterizations, we're going to define parameterization. So my dimensions say 10, minimum say 10, to 15 say by 2.5, okay? And also, equally important is to parameterize the loads, restraint. Okay. So I'm going to parameterize the voltage. So I'm going to go from 10,000, say, to 60,000 volt by 50,000 volt. Okay. And generate scenarios. Now I have five scenarios. So. My scenarios are uh, sizes 10, 12.5, and 15, and it repeats for different voltages, 10,000 and 60,000. Okay. okay, and that's it. Now we can click on Run Study. I do, we don't want you to uh, wait for the study, so I already have a previous study, so let's just examine the results. Okay. Right, so... Um, let me sh go ahead and show the air gap because that is the important part that I want to show. Okay. So first set of results, I want to plot the electric field everywhere, right? Or, or I, okay, so this is my electric field everywhere that you can see. This is for scenario number one. So most of the electric field is right here. Okay. Uh, so let's now look at, at the air, f the electric field right in the air gap. Okay. Now it's important to design the air gap, air gap that it will not produce corona while the voltage is the operating voltage, say 10,000 volt. You don't want this to. You don't want the. You don't want the uh, in the normal operating condition to create corona right here and it's going to defeat the whole purpose of this design you want it to create corona only at the fault or the lightning strike voltage so so my scenario one um, okay scenario two in the air gaps and you can see there's no breakdown so if I look, if I look at the at the electric field in the uh, insulator scenario two, and say show plots only in the insulator, it's nice. It's it is much below the breakdown. So there is no breakdown in the insulator, and there is no breakdown in the air. So it is the proper size of the air gap. Okay. If it was much smaller, probably it could generate corona, which is undesirable at that voltage. Now let's look at scenario three, and I'm still at 10,000 volt, even at, at 10, 12.5, 50 millimeter, I'm fine. My, uh, there's no breakdown, the voltage is, is much below 310 to the power of 6, so I'm, I'm fine, there's no breakdown. Now, this is now, let's go to scenario 4. Now, scenario 4, the voltage is 60,000 volts. Okay, 
And now, I want to create Corona. I want to create a spark, an arc. So, I want to make sure that the entire gap, there is a voltage breakdown. If it's only part, it's going to have some sparking, but there is no full uh, conducting path in the ionized, ionized air. Okay, so clearly, I'm there, I'm there, but there's a doubt in this region whether, because here 10 to 0.59, it's probably slightly below. I'm going to show you later on another type of plot that is going to show you clearly whether you have a breakdown or not. Right, so scenario four, scenario five, while scenario five, uh, again, it looks like there is a breakdown all over in the gap, and scenario six as well. Right, okay, now let's look at scenario one. There is a 2D plot, I can do a 2D plot linear plot and if I choose uh, I can insert uh, reverse geometry point 1 and point 2 that's straightforward and sort of works right so point 1 and point 2 are at the end both ends of the uh, of the um, uh, air gap so uh, for scenario 1 I can see in the entire air gap there is no breakdown. So that is nice. That's what I want. Okay? If I want to see the numerical values, I can see the listing. Okay? Of course, I can export this to Excel or other uh, data format. Okay? So that's my scenario one. Let's look at scenario two. Scenario two is also fine. It's above breakdown. Scenario three is also I'm still fine. Scenario four, I'm most of the air region, the air gap region, my voltage is above the breakdown. This is going to break, it's going to break. Except here, it's not quite. So probably some region is not going to break down, they're going to be regular air, and that is going to cause a problem to the arc. So you're not going to have a continuous arc, and that could be problematic. Uh, if you want to again see the listing, you can see the listing. Now let's look at scenario five. Scenario five, all right, so there you go. Everything is above the breakdown. So you are sure there is a conducting path in the air made by the arc. If you can see it, look at it in the text format, everything above 310 to the power 6. So I know that scenario 5 is a good one. So if a, a lightning strike hits, okay, a corona arcing is going to produce, it gets produced here. Okay. Scenario 6, 6 is also similar, but at the end there is some very close but not quite it. So let's say scenario five is my ideal dimension with the proper voltage, 16,000 volts now. Now, at scenario five, I know that's gonna go here, but what is gonna happen, okay, in the insulator itself? And it's important to know that. I've got scenario five and plot in the insulator, okay, all right, zoom to fit. Now, am I going to have a breakdown? No, I'm not going to have a breakdown. So this is a good design at this, at this dimension of the air gap because the insulator is safe and the corona, okay, if I want to can put a vector plot to, to probably better show the corona in the... Uh, air gap and there you go so your corona okay this is, this is scenario one but let's do scenario five where the okay so everything is going to break down okay so, so 
So the line plot along with the fringe plot can tell you. So this is, is good. So so let me repeat. You want a design that is not going to produce any arcing at the normal operating condition at 10,000 volts, but you want it to produce the arcing or the corona or the sparking only when there is a faulty condition. So that's exactly what we achieved for this design. Okay. Uh, you can also plot the potential. Okay. Um, this is a 10,000 volt. You can, uh, if you want, you can animate. Okay. So we have uh, diverse scenarios, right? So. Okay. So this is just uh, it goes from 10,000 to 60,000 volt. You can also plot, if you wish to do a section clipping, you, I can do a, a fringe plot section clipping, and I can do a, in the air gap only, let's see, so uh, plot in section, I'm going to do say scenario number five, and I want to do a section clipping, and it's, I use this section, okay, now, no, I want to uh, plot only in the air gap, so choose air gap, okay, zoom to fit, my section, all right, so that's my section, okay, and now I can actually produce many sections and actually I can overlay the cut, okay, so now it's going to produce different cuts, automatically it's going to produce different cuts, okay. So you can actually see inside. So that's a, another different uh, the vector plot, section plot. Okay, so that's that's one way to look at it is by looking at the electric field and knowing that the air breaks down at three ten to the power six volts per meter. You can look at the fringe plot and you know whether this is going to break down or not. Another way to actually look at it. In EMS, we, def we define something called safety factor. Safety factor, the ratio of the electric field strength in a given region divided by the breakdown electric field. And if it is below one, means that you are safe. Your, your dielectric is not going to break down because it's below one and more than one is going to break down. So this is something we introduced in EMS. You don't find it in another software. So your safety factor in the air gap for uh, scenario number one, you are much lower than one, so you are safe. Scenario two, scenario three, okay? Scenario four, it's the same information we presented with the electric field, but now it's a more convenient way uh, to look at it is by looking at the safety factor. And ironically, safety factor in the air gap, when there is a, a, a faulty condition, you want it to be larger than one. As you can see, most of it, and probably around here, not very sure, but if you do scenario five, then you are sure. So anything above one is going to assure you that is going to break down. So that's a voltage breakdown where your safety factor is larger than one. You can do safety factor for six. Okay. Now, what happens to the safety factor if you want to do it uh, for, you said, scenario number five, and I want to see in the insulator, am I safe or not? And there you go, you're safe. Okay. See, so in the insulator, okay the safety factor is much less than one. So, so the, 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 the scenario five is really gives me the proper dimension, proper voltage, okay? Now, one thing you can actually do, uh, if you wanna do any modification, you can uh, copy and paste your study, okay? And now I have a copy of my study. I can modify material, loads, uh, scenarios, whatever. Okay. I can simply hit run and run again. 
okay? Or I can, before going home in the evening, can run all studies. Okay. Now, as far as the results, uh, you don't need to write down, write, write down information because you can generate, actually, a report that has all the information about your study. So I can customize, put my company logo, write my name, company name, date, I can produce either Microsoft Word or an HTML, HTML format. So I say OK. And now EMS is going to dump all the data that I prescribed, the, the pre-processing, the post-processing, the results and everything in a nice uh, formatted file that you can, uh, you know, definitely because in HTML, you can share it over the internet or you can produce a PDF file. And uh, so, uh, you can print it, of course, okay? And you can print preview. Uh, you can jump to a particular section. So if I want the parameterization, right click parameterization. So this is my parameterization. This is my results table for the energy for each so all my results are right here, okay? I can save them and look at them a few years from now and you don't, without forgetting anything because all the input and output results are right there. Okay, so that's basically, to conclude, EMS helps you to properly size your air gap. That is gonna, that serves two purposes. One is to make sure that the air gap does not create corona when the voltage is the operating uh, voltage. In this case, it's 10,000 volts. At the same time, you want it to produce corona when the voltage is very high to protect your uh, uh, bushing. So uh, you can see, you can, it's very powerful, very easy to use. You can, you know, look at the results, different results. There are, look, if I want to look at all the results, there are plot, there is streamline, there is point, there is all kinds. You can create, uh, you can group them by folder, you can, so on and so forth. So, so that's basically it, you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, power of EMS really can help you uh, achieve your goal. Because you are inside solid works, you don't need to import or export or heal the, uh, the geometry. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for the presentation, and 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 thank you everyone for bearing us, bearing with us uh, so far. And I hope you have learned enough from this webinar. Uh, let me briefly touch upon the licensing structure offered by EMWorks. We offer three different programs, uh, commercial, academic, and startup programs. Each program has its own benefits and requirements. Uh, within the commercial program, we offer perpetual licenses, while our licensing structure is usually annually based on the rest of the programs. We have a combination of free and paid licenses for students, academics, mentors, lecturers, and professors based on the program they choose. Uh, for startups, uh, we are offering a very interesting plan for paying in installment. Uh, our EMWorks offers various free learning, free learning resources. With the software purchase or even trial, users can access to the demo viewer section of the software through which they can access many predefined model examples and tutorials. In addition, uh, we have regular webinar series on trending electromagnetic topics. Moreover, we regularly post uh, several application notes, blogs, and videos on our web pages, social medias, and YouTube channels. Uh, we also offer paid customized training session for all our EMWorks software users. Our uh, support service is the strongest point that I can mention in this presentation. 
we always have your back before and after sales. That's including one-to-one -one web demo sessions to shorten your learning curve or even do benchmarking with uh, the new model that you shared with us. Also, we are offering consultation and design engineering services, even come up with a new design as per your requirements or refine and optimize your existing design. Uh, these are these are only a couple of our respected clients. Uh, these big names are coming from different industries showing our comprehensive and extensive solution. Uh, I encourage uh, everyone to try our software and experience its capabilities. We offer two weeks of free trial access uh, to our uh, trial version actually. Visit our webpage, webpage www.emworks.com. Go to our contact page, contact us page, fill in your information and submit uh, your request, and we will contact you. At the end, I would like to thank you all on behalf of EMWorks for participating in this webinar. Feel free to contact me after this webinar to get more information on our product. Thank you very much, and have a great day.